This is a 2005 1.83 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo Mac Mini. Now, why I initially bought this was because its cosmetic condition resulted in a price of £25. But it was sold as working. As you can see, it's not perfect. So I thought to do a video where we take it apart, clean it up, and then we can have some fun with it, with ideas of things we can test on it, or how we can modify it to sort of max it out from you guys. But as ever, before stripping it, I thought I'd do my usual thing and test if it worked. And that is where things went a bit wrong. As you can see, this indicates a hard drive failure. Not so bad for the video because it means you get content seeing me replacing the hard drive. Luckily, I have a few spares lying around and installing the operating system. But, so in this video, we're going to take this apart, replace the hard drive. Hopefully, it is just a hard drive issue. If that works, install a new operating system. Then, if successful, I'm going to take it completely apart, clean it up. And then, in a future video, Luke, at upgrading this. To the max! So, this little guy came from the factory with a 1.83 GHz Intel Core 2 Duro processor, 80 GB spinning rust serial ATA hard drive, 1 GB of 667 MHz DDR2 memory, a slot loading 8x single layer DVD CD RW combo drive, and an Intel GMA950 graphics processor with 64 MB of DDR2 SD RAM shared with main memory. Connectivity includes DVI and Firewire 400, four USB 2 ports, combined optical digital audio input, audio line in, and combined optical digital audio output, headphone mini jacks, whew, that's a lot to get out, an Ethernet port, and a built-in Airport Extreme WAN Bluetooth 2. So, enough chatter, our first task is to get this thing apart, get the old hard drive out, and see if it will fire up with a replacement drive. Right, and now we find the reason uh, for the floppy drive not working. So, sorry, the hard drive not working. It doesn't actually have one. So, okay, that's uh, what you might call handy. So if I put this into here, I should. Give us a hard drive of sorts. Right, put that there, and uh, this back in the there. Okay. And what I'm going to do at this point is just put this back together, see if it fires up and recognises it's got a hard drive in it. Basically, I don't know what I'm doing, but there's a hard drive in there now, so it should do something, I think. Maybe not. Okay, so a short while later, and uh, what I realised is that... Although I put this onto the card, I hadn't pushed the card into the motherboard properly. So at the moment, it's not going to fire up because it's got its floppy drive and it's missing. But see that fan twitches. 
The fan does need help to get it going sometimes. Uh, but I can hear that hard drive spinning up. So I know there's some life there at least. So what I'm going to try and do now is to get an operating system. If I just do that. There you go. Fan. The fan happily spins up. Quite a little draft it creates. So I'm going to switch this on, get the floppy drive, some floppy drive, get the, uh, ow, get the CD-ROM onto it, and see if we can get it to install uh, Tiger, because I have a nice fresh copy of Tiger for it. Okay, as is typical, uh, I've been, I've tried every key combination possible to get this to reject. There is a disc stuck in there, so I'm trying to get it out, but it's not having it, no matter what I do. Just sits there. Uh, tried a bit of force, but it seems as it's sitting on the head. So I think the only way you're going to get this out is to unscrew it. Now I am aware that you can uh, load the operating system by USB, yeah, but I think that comes with its own problems. So I'm going to try it this way. I've also lost my Tiger CD, so I'm going to have to uh, download and make one of them. So what I'm going to do try to resolve this situation. Let's take these little top screws off, remove the top and see if we can get the CD out that way. Uh, if nothing else, it's a good exercise in how to free up CDs. These are tiny screws so they're going to be a pain in the butt to get back in. There you go, I'm leaving it in the uh, machine just so, leaving the drive in the machine just so that I've got to, it holds it tight. What else? It's going to be slipping around everywhere. I'm so easy to lose these screws. Oh, oh yeah, there's typical. Yeah, the one just shot down the back there. So if I turn this out now, I have the power switched off. There we go. And there's our little bugger that's run off. Yeah, that's gone deeper inside. Typical. So I'm going to have to try and extract it extract it there we go extract it off the motherboard as well uh, right put that back later so this is a good opportunity to have a look inside one of these if this opens up at this point there in my look possibly one and you lot can get there so I don't lose you. And hide. Right. See if it will. And the answer is. Bloody no. It's like it's a bit more complex than we gave it credit for. Yeah, there's a little folded metal. Maybe join there. No. It's all folded together, so yeah. I don't think we're getting in that way. There's probably people laughing at me now doing this, but there you go. Learning, breaking. So I can see the CD now. I don't want to pull too hard. Because I think there might be a screw under it. Looks like it. Feels like it. So, I, oh, it's tough. I think that's designed to not get in. So, I'm gonna have to have a look. See if we can get in. Yeah, that uh, security scale was easily bypassed just by screwing the top the screw from the top. And it turns out we have an OS X Tiger disc in there. So, in that case. So just this drive is kaput. Let me just try and take this out. There you go. Uh, you can see why I've been trying to extract it there. May have caused a little bit of damage. Well, there we go. Hmm. Right, so how do we go forward with this? I'm going to put this back together, fire it up, try and put this disc back in. See if that works. And if not, 
USB jobber. Hmm, we'll try in USB. If that uh, doesn't do anything, then we are buggered and I'll be open to suggestions. So let's put this thing back together first. Right, that is uh, the optical drive put back together. There's the disc that came out of it. And we've reassembled it. So let's just see what it does with no disc in it. Ooh, that sounded painful. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that didn't sound happy at all. But at least it's not making ridiculous noises now. That's one good thing. Uh, I think it's just going to go to the same thing, obviously. Uh, the little lever at the front has dropped, so it looks like it's working in that aspect. There was a little thing in the way to stop you putting discs in. That's moved out of the way. That's where all the cracking sound was. The fan's not running up to ridiculous speeds. And yeah, we can just get that. That's what we expected. Let's just cycle that again. Yeah, that sounds a bit healthier that time. <laughs> that wasn't happy that time. Let's just see. That drive sounds lovely. No, nope, we've got the, uh, we've got that again. So it doesn't like that disc. Or oh, that drive isn't working. One of the two, obviously. So, let me see what we can do. to try and inject it again, but I don't think it's going to play. Right, yeah, tried over them. That ain't going to eject. So, going forward, to get the operating system on, if we can, I'm going to have to try and do it through USB. Now, I think... The smallest one I've got is 32 gig. I do not know what size this can take. We can but try. Uh, so there is a copy of Tiger on the Internet Archive. I can download that and mount it onto a bootable USB. We'll try that route. If that fails. It's suggestions in the comments. Well, we'll see what we'll do. Right, sometime later, and I've used a program uh, which, well, I tried to flash uh, the ISO onto this uh, SD card, uh, but um, Ventura on the M1 just wasn't having it. I ended up using a program called, I think it's called Bellino or something, uh, which seems to have worked. So we're going to test this. So we need to plug this. I got a mouse. A mouse. A mouse. There's a moose in your house, so we'll plug in the moose. We'll plug in this, and apparently if we press option, well booting, it should <coughs> do the job. Let's see if that's the case. Uh, so, option. We have a light on the screen. Let's see. Is it gonna do anything? Or just the same as ever? I'm holding what I think is the option key on a uh, Windows keyboard. So far. Nada. Hmm. Right, I'll come back if uh, anything happens. Nope, we got the thingy. So, we'll try a different key first. Right, I give up with this for today. Uh, I've tried everything. I tried Tiger, booting off there, pressing all different combinations. Holding this button down, or that button down, or that button down, or that button down. All I ever got was that screen. Uh, so, it says 10.4.10. So, I later tried, that's what's in it now, uh lion and as you can see same result so at this point i'm stuck on what to do so if you've got any suggestions as to how 
Sounds are ramping up, it's getting hot. As to how possibly we can fix this, uh, then please leave in comments. But for now, I'm a little stuck. Hmm. So, if you do know, please help with this one. Other than that, if you enjoy these sorts of videos, uh, then please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, and you can support us through Patreon if you wish. Other than that, thank you very much, and I hope we can get this one uh, working with people's helps in the comment comments. Thank you very much. <laughs>